In this video, we're going to talk about Miller's theorem. Before we uh, derive Miller's theorem, we want to just look at an example to show why we want to worry about this. So we're going to look at a standard common emitter amplifier. So we have our biasing resistors. And then this is R plus VCC. We have our coupling capacitor and we have our input source with an RS. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to have a feedback capacitor, which we call CFR feedback capacitor, connected between the base or the input side and the output side of our amplifier. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to make some assumptions to make this a little bit easier. So the first thing we're going to do is assume that RO is much, much greater than RC, so we can neglect that, that R1 in parallel with R2 are much, much greater than R pi, so we don't have to worry about those. Uh, C1 right here is a coupling capacitor, so it basically blocks DC, so we are going to pick our frequency such that C1 is negligible, meaning an open circuit. Okay. Oops, not an open circuit, a short circuit. Okay, so now let's draw our small signal model. So here is our VN, here is our RS. This is where our C1 would go. We said it was negligible. So here is our R pi. And then we have our dependent voltage source, which is GMV pi. And here is our RC, because there's no V, there's no RO. And then this is where we put our feedback capacitor right, right there. And let's just go ahead and call it 1 over J omega CF. Okay, so now we need to figure out what V in over V out is. So we have to do a node voltage. And we are going to come in and, you know, this node right here, we already have labeled V pi, so we just call that V pi. So to do our node voltage, like we go V out minus V pi times J omega CF plus g m v pi plus v out times one over r c equals zero. Uh, simplify this down, we have v out times one over r c plus j omega c f equals v pi times j omega c f plus gm. So this is our first equation. And then we're going to do our next node over here. And so then we go v pi minus v in times 1 over rs plus v pi minus v out times J omega CF plus V pi times one over R pi equals zero. We simplify this down to get our second equation and we get V pi one over RS plus J omega 
cf plus 1 over r pi equals v in times 1 over r s plus v out times j omega cf. Okay, so just to keep everything simple, we are going to go in here and we're going to do a simple circuit where r pi is going to be much, much greater than rs. By doing this, this goes away, goes to zero. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to come in here and eliminate v pi. So v pi equals v out times 1 over rc plus j omega cf divided by j omega cf plus gm. And then we are going to take the v pi that we solved from this top one and we're going to take this v pi and plug it into this equation right here. And then we have v out 1 over rc plus, well, let's just copy this down. And we are going to copy this over. Okay, and then we'll keep going, minus j omega cf. So this whole thing equals vn times 1 over rs. Okay, so now we just have to do a whole bunch of algebra, but you see that this gets messy really fast, and it's just a messy disaster. So what we're going to do is we are going going to solve this with numbers and just plot it to see what it roughly looks like. And our goal is to use Miller's theorem to be able to simplify all of this math and algebra because you can see solving this is just going to be a big mess. So we're going to come in here and we're going to pick some numeric values so we can see what's going on. So RC is 1 kilo ohm. Ohm. We're just choosing a GM is 0 0.02 amps per volt. You can see we're picking values that are similar to stuff that we've used before. And this is 10 picofarads. Uh, the R pi is beta over GM, which is equal to 15 kilo ohms, which is much, much greater than Rs, which is what we said that we were going to do. Okay, so then what we're going to do is just to simplify everything down, uh, we're going to name, we're going to go to MATLAB and plot this. So we're just going to call this part x1, this part x2, and this part x3. And then we're going to make all of this x4. Okay, so let's go and look at MATLAB. So here is what we have. Like we said, here's our variables that we put in. We're going to be sweeping our frequency. We're going to do log space. So we're going from 10 to the 1. So from 10 hertz up to 10 to the 10, which is like a really high, way up into the megahertz, multiple, maybe gigahertz. Uh, and then here's our frequency. And then, like I said before, here is our, our x1, which is this part right here. Here is the x2, which is this part right here. 
here is the x3 which is this part right here and then the x4 is Oh, well, it looks like the X4 went all the way over and grabbed this whole thing. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's go ahead and fix it just to make sure that we're all clear. So this whole thing is X4. Okay. And then we're going to come in here and figure out here is our gain converted into decibels and plot it. So we run this and see where our plot is. Okay, so here is our plot. So you can kind of see that th this is our mid-band gain point where there's no frequency. You hit some point where we have a pull and we basically start decaying down. Oh, then it flattens back off because we have a zero. So you see that this thing has a pull and a zero. But you know, this zero point is way out here. This is like a gigahertz. So we have our first corner around a megahertz, and then it flattens back off at a gigahertz. But, you know, this is so far down in our signal that usually we don't even care about this lower corner. We're just trying to find this upper corner here. So we're going to use an approximation which is called Miller's Theorem or Miller's Approximation which helps us find this corner right here because we're going to neglect this corner right here. So Miller's Theorem is only going to find one of the corners which is going to be our dominant corner which is right here. Okay, so now we are ready for Miller's Theorem. So let's just draw our line. So now we're doing Miller's theorem. So what Miller's theorem is, is we just want to find out what the equivalent is looking from the input side and the output side from a configuration with a gain. So it's basically designed if you have a feedback across a gain element. So if I have some type of amplifying element here and I have some feedback element that is connected from the input side to the output side. Now I could have a whole bunch of stuff connected over here on the output and I can have a whole bunch of stuff connected over here on the input. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out to make sure that we'll call this V1 and this V2. And I'm trying to find the equivalent current. So I want to make sure that this current here is the same. And this current here is the same. Okay, so the equivalent of this is, well, I can have all of these elements coming over here. Rather than having the feedback piece, I'm going to take my feedback piece. So this is going to be called, this is Z feedback. Okay, and then I'm going to call this Z1 on my input side. And then I'm going to have my amplifying piece, and I'm going to have some Z2, which is on my output side, and I'm still going to have the same stuff connected over here. And what I want is I want this current and this current to be the same which means that over here, if I have the same I1 coming out of this node and the same voltage across there in these two configurations, then, they're, then I can treat it as if they're the same. And then I do the same thing looking from my output side. Okay, so let's get some equations here and see what this does. So over on the original side, I'm basically doing a node voltage at my V1 node. So I'm going to go V1 minus V2 over ZF is going to be equal to, over here, that's going to be equal to V1 over Z1. And then 
So this is my first part. So I'm looking at this side here compared to this side there. Well, I also know that my voltages are related by this amplifying element. So I have V2 is equal to A times V1. So then I can plug that in and I have V1 minus AV2 over ZF is equal to V1 over Z1. And I'm trying to solve for the Z1. So that's what I'm trying to solve for right there. So I bring that over and I have Z1 is equal to ZF times V1 over V1 minus A, oops, that's a V1, V1, which is equal to ZF over 1 minus A. Okay, so this is my first equation. Z1 equals ZF over 1 minus A. Okay, and then I could do that, the same thing from my output side. Oh boy, lots of little mistakes. So this is an I2. So I want this I2 to be equal to that I2. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So now, but we're looking from the other side. So V2 minus V1 over ZF is equal to V2 over Z2. And again, we're going to use the same equation right here. And so then I have AV1 minus V1 over ZF is equal to V2 over Z2. Dot, dot, dot. We do the algebra just like we did before, and we get Z2 is equal to ZF over 1 minus 1 over A. Okay, and then these two, this piece and this piece are Miller's theorem. So now let's just review. So anytime I have an amplifying element with a feedback element connected across from the input side to the output side of an amplifier, I can take my feedback part and bring it down to the input side and bring it down to the output side. Now you see when I do this that I end up with two corners, two low pass corners. And one of these is going to be dominant because I don't really have two corners. I really have one pole and one zero. So one of these has to be dominant and that creates my dominant pole. And I use these two equations to bring my